I just bought this little pickup truck the other day. It's a 2006 Yamaha Rhino 660. One of my friends got one uh, Kawasaki similar to it, and it was pretty cool, so I figured I'd get one. Um, so, yeah, I figured, you know, this would be a fun thing to have. You know, I'd probably do a little bit of work with it, but mostly just bought it as a toy. So, um... So yeah, I just I just got it. So let me uh, take it for a test drive. All right. So the guy I bought this from said it worked good, and I test drove it at his house. But he lived in like a city, and there was no room to really drive it. I just drove it around his yard. Now that I have it at my house where there's space to drive it, it the transmission isn't working properly. It's got like a belt drive, I think this has like a belt drive transmission like a snowmobile and it just, it feels like it's sticking or something where it's, um, it's, be, it's like being in a car that you can't get out of first gear. So, so let me tear into it and see what, what's going on. Alright, so I've been messing with it for a little while here kind of off camera. This is what's going on. So this here is the primary drive clutch. And the way this thing gears itself higher is just like a snowmobile. When this has weights and stuff in it, and once it spins faster, this thing squeezes smaller. And this belt rides higher up into here. And then the secondary clutch kind of gets smaller. To, to That way they give it different gears. So I, I took this apart. I have it back together now, but it needs a new clutch. I'll, sh I'll take this apart and show you what's wrong with it. Um, and in case you're working on one of these and wondering how to get this co belt cover off, this hose here, that has to be unbolted. I, I was, I could not figure out how to get that out of there, but that, that's how you do it. All right, so let me take this back apart and I'll show you what's going on. All right, let me sh actually show you what's wrong with the transmission. So I got the rear wheels off the ground. All right, and the uh, engine transmission cover off. I'll start it up. drive. Alright, so now I... Alright, so now it's in drive. I'll step on the gas. Watch what happens. All right, so the, see this? It's halfway working. See how this thing this it shrinks down? It doesn't go enough. It sh that belt should make it all the way to the end of this pulley. All right, so this is pretty nice. How you can take this clutch apart in sections. All right, so here's the primary clutch. So let me explain how this works. So I had this apart a few times. This was full of the nastiest grease I've ever seen. People say you can like fix these, but see what happened to mine. It's got these weights in here, and when it spins faster, these are supposed to push, make the clutch move. What happened, these, these things here broke, which holds the weights in place, so the weights were falling out and just kind of falling sideways and, and ending up, you know, like that. So th this, this isn't fixable, it just needs to be replaced. So here's a brand new one right here. You know, if you're having issues with the clutch on this thing, th that new one, aftermarket, was pretty cheap. So. I don't even think it was worth messing with that original one. So let's go put this on it now. You can open up the secondary clutch by threading one of these bolts into it. Now see how loose the belt is now? There we go. Now 
this can go back on. It's all back together. The wheels are still off the ground. Let's start it up and try it and see what happens. Now we're looking at this area right here. This belt should make it to about the end of this pulley when it's full speed. All right, that looks like it's fixed to me. Time to put it all back together. All right, so this thing is working well now. The transmission is nice and smooth, and it's it's much faster now, as fast as it needs to be. So um, I'll go over the controls quick. This thing's pretty cool. So it's got you push button four wheel drive, and then when you're in four wheel drive, you can lock the front differential. So that's nice. You probably go anywhere. Um, you know, it's automatic. So just it's a high, low, and reverse.
I kind of bought this thing with the intentions of using it as a toy, but it's been pretty useful having it around for doing work. I just used it to clean up all the leaves and stuff that were in my hot tub area here. You know, this, so the ground is nice and clean now. And check this out. I added this uh, television to this this year. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to unscrew these all the way. That's a slot. Washer. Washer. Take a whole bottle of ketchup and chug it. That's disgusting.
Just put that piece on there. Okay, so this is everything I have done to make this thing quieter. I added this insulation right here. I relocated the air intake. It was right here between the seats. Now it goes up and out a little further away. And I added insulation to the bottom of this cover where the intake used to come up. I don't really see much more I can do to it to make it quieter. Um, let's let's see what kind of results we got. The thing in neutral, just revving it. Let's see what we got. I'm doing the, uh, the rear brakes have been grinding for a while on this. You can see the rotor's a little scuffed up, but it's smooth, it's all right. And the brake pads have nothing left on them. So uh, this is the way to take this apart from the bottom. And it's, it's really nice doing it on the lift because I can do it standing up. Um, but I tried getting the brake caliper out through here and it, it wasn't happening. So uh, let's get these new brake pads installed. new ones here and there's these back plates that need to come off and get transferred to the new ones That worked. All right, so that's good. So this gap here, you know, that's, you know, you want to make sure that's wide enough to get over the brake rotor. Oh, now these need to slide as well.
All right, these fronts weren't making any noise, but the you know the brake pad set I ordered came with them. So, all right, so it looks like we got two different part numbers here. So uh, they're going to be different on each side. But let's just throw these in here too. It looks really easy to do. Oh wow. All right, well, it's a good thing I'm doing all the brakes. That's that's worn down to nothing. All right, so that's good that this plate this thing is moved back all the way and the pistons are pushed in all the way all right so here's our old brake pads here's our new ones let's just figure out what side we need and that looks wrong so it's probably these All right, these ones. And go that way, goes this way. All right, that side's done. I might need to bleed it. Should I bother filming this side? I mean, it's the exact same thing's gonna happen. Yeah, that's too boring. I'll just throw this together. All right, I just did the uh, right side. That went a little bit smoother than the left. So let me see how these brakes feel if I need to bleed them. No, oh, probably. Well, no, they feel good. I think that was just taking up the gap. You know to close on the new brakes yeah they feel good this doesn't have vacuum assisted brakes like a car does so doesn't matter if the motor's running the parking brake feels good that's right where that was the brakes are nice and quiet now I should have filmed it before they were screeching so loud it sounded like it was like broken or something let's go try it out at high speed yeah it breaks brakes work good in this thing now All right, I've had this thing a few months now, and I definitely like it. I want to do a few little upgrades to it now. Um, I just picked up this winch. I want to install that on the front. Now, the thing barely needs a winch. I mean, to get this thing stuck, you got to be trying to get it stuck. 
because with the just the way it's set up with the the independent suspension, the whole bottom of the thing is completely flat. It's got a front differential locker. It is extremely hard to get this thing stuck, but not impossible. And when it does get stuck, if nobody's around, it is too heavy to get out by hand. So having that winch will be nice. And I also want to add some extra lights to the front. I've been at, riding the thing at night a lot. And, um, you know, you can see where you're going with these lights, but... It's not the same as having like one of those nice light bars. Those are so much brighter. And the other thing, probably the most important thing I'm going to do right now, is I want to add a little more protection to this front bumper. The bumper that's on here, you know, it's it's all right, but I mean, one this piece, there's a piece missing that's supposed to be right there. And you know, this is just garbage, garbage plastic that doesn't do anything. And the, the radiator is right up in there so I want to protect that a little bit better so I know there's aftermarket bumpers available for this thing but I'm gonna just make something instead alright let's get to work on the winch and bumper first first step let me get this garbage off of here alright so I know I'm throwing this out but I want to keep it because I want it to still look kind of factory, but not made out of plastic. All right, this plate, it's welded on there good, but it needs a little more strength. It needs to be attached like this somehow. All right, that's what I did for that. I added that rebar in there. I think that'll be fine. All right, so it's bolted back on there loosely. Um, now I need to replace this piece that's missing. It'd be nice if the previous owner didn't lose the piece, but I don't have it. So this pipe is about the same diameter, and uh, the wall thickness is a drop thicker, but it's okay. Um, so it pretty much goes something like this. Now they have the bend about an inch past where it's welded, so I may have to put a little bend on this. Yeah, that looks about the same. So now I'll cut it here and right here. Alright, that welded on there nicely and that looks like, you know, perfect. Um, so note on this, this gray coating like this, this is called galvanized and um, you don't want to breathe that. So like whenever I'm, I'm pretty much outside here and whenever I'm welding it, I'm pretty much not breathing in. Um, this isn't plumbing pipe, this is like from a fence and because um, the wall thickness of plumbing pipe would, would be too thick, you wouldn't, there wouldn't be any advantage to having that, those heavy pieces on here. You know, this, the wall thickness of this is probably just a drop thicker than this, which really, this is a little too thin. This is probably perfect for this bumper. All right, so now my plan is to add 
I'm gonna throw the winch on there to make sure I don't make any clearance issues and then add a few more pipes in here to protect stuff. So let me lay out the design. I'll take another piece of this tubing and probably put it right about there. And then this area could be filled in with mesh. And then I'll take more tubing and do something, I don't know, maybe something like that. And I'll just make sure I, um, you know, I'll just, you know, it could be here or it could be way towards the end. You know, just so there's no clearance issues with the tire. The tire has to not rub when the it's fully turned and fully compressed. Now, there is a thing called a tubing notcher. I, sh I should probably buy one. All right, everything I can get to is welded. All right, I just finished welding up all the joints on this thing. Right, you know what would be pretty cool, that. Alright, so you know what's nice about working on a lift? I kind of have to lean to the get to the, the work height. All I do is this. And now I can make the work any height I want it. See, now this stuff is strong, but you gotta weld it everywhere. See, I've seen some people, they'll weld it like here and then here, like skip a bunch of pieces. It, it, there's no strength like that. When it's like this, it's fine. All right, this should be the last time I have to take this off of here.
All right, so this plastic, not good enough. Got some aluminum here, that'd be better. All right, so I gotta trim this up right there. All right, needs to be bent. Let's see, where are we bent? Eight, seven and a half. All right, I should really buy a brake someday, but um, I don't have one right now, so a brake is a tool that you could use to bend this, and it would do a perfect job of it. But let's see if we use a pallet. Pallet and a hammer. To, to not guess and not walk back and forth a million times, you could just use this thing and measure the angle. All right, that's pretty good. Now I got to trim. I guess I'll just trim that right off. It's not doing anything. And this plate's a little too long in the back, so. Up. All right, that makes it easier to work on. All right, so this is what you get with the winch. You get uh, some power leads, solenoid, and then there's the uh, rocker switch to control it. All right, so I just mounted this solenoid right here. So as far as power leads go, so this needs to go to that. And then we need to run two wires from this to the battery, which is right here. Now, the wires they give you are, pr are pretty long. You know, I don't, I've seen people do this and they'll just leave a coil of wire like that, just tie it to the frame or something. That looks pretty sloppy. So what I'm gonna do is cut these wires and um, get it to the right length.
So this is that other wire that was from the winch. This is supposed to be hooked to ignition power for the winch to work. So I'm noticing we have a keyed ignition right here on this hour meter, which this hour meter doesn't work, but let's try to fix that too. The hour meter gets power. So if you put this on power, now this you got a thing to test for ground. So All right, so the hour meter has no ground. So that's probably why that's not working. I'm gonna turn off the ignition. Let's see if that light goes off. Look at this wire all taped up, hang on. Oh, look at that. Look where they have this ground wire going. This ground wire is going to the positive. No wonder it doesn't work. So I just moved this wire over to the negative side. And let's plug it into this hour gauge. All right, it's not lighting up. All right, it says 443 hours on it. So I don't know how many, uh, that's the first time that's ever worked. So that's good. That would be good for uh, service. Attempt to clean this up. Let me take that out of there. These are junk, these things. Don't ever use these. Because they work, but they work for like a year. And then it can be pretty hard to find out why they're not working. Especially if a bunch of them have been used. See, even these, these squeeze connectors, this is the fuse for those lights I'm adding. You know, I wouldn't use that. Because it'll work for a while, but then it gets corrosion in there, and it'll fail. Alright, so I just finished up all the wiring on this thing. Everything's working. So here's the wiring to the light bar and the winch. You know, everything's tied so it's not moving and positioned so it shouldn't ever get ripped off. So I mounted the winch solenoid right here. So that's hooked up. The um, I cleaned up some stuff in this battery compartment a little bit. Everything I did, I soldered and most of it got you I used shrink tube because that's the only way to make an electrical connection and have it actually stay working for more than a year or so um, so we're all done I got I ordered a light bar for up there it's about the width of the vehicle so I'm waiting for that to come and inside the cab the new switches I added this is a 35 amp switch for the big light bar that's for the that small light bar and this is for the reverse lights and dash lights that somebody added. Alright, and this thing's all done. Alright, so the bumper winch light bar project was a success. I'm happy with how that turned out.
One time this lady I was working with, she was telling us at work about her electric chainsaw and how she was putting uh, gas and oil in it. And we all started saying, like, wait a minute, gas and oil, what do you mean? And uh, turns out she was putting mixed gas, it, mixed gas in with the bar oil and uh, running the saw like that. You know, an electric chainsaw that plugs in. We were so surprised that the thing didn't catch on fire while she was running it. All right, I needed a little bit more clearance between this light bar and the windshield, so I'm just going to lift up this roof a little bit. And that should be fine. Alright, here we are sitting in the Rhino in the dark. Here's the regular headlights. Doesn't look like anything on the camera. In real life you can see, but it's pretty dark. Here is the light bar in the bumper. That's nice, it lights up the area immediately in front of you. Here is the light bar on the roof. And that pretty much lights up everything. And then the lights to the rear. All right, so I've had this thing a couple months now. I just had it out riding the other day, and it worked great, but one issue that kind of arose 
this thing kind of sits too low to the ground and we were going pretty fast down some rocky trails and pretty much just bottomed out and crashed into nothing essentially a few times just rocks sticking up hitting the frame going like 30 miles an hour and it being a pretty violent stop so I'll put I'll put it up on the lift and show you but I probably want to change this aluminum plate so I want to try to get this thing sitting a little higher so I have a few different things to try here so I just got some new shocks these are supposed to be stiffer so that should help with the added weight that just got added from the winch and that bumper now the bumper didn't really weigh much but the winch definitely added some weight and I got this is a lift kit in this box here and I got some new control arm guards and I got this is a dust cover they called it and that should help make it quieter all right so let's get all this stuff installed so the goal is to get this thing higher up off the ground so let's see how high it is right now so we are at about nine about nine inches and we want the suspension stiffer so let's see how that is so standing on the front bumper. All right, I was jumping as hard as I could. All right, so let's do some work to it and see what changes it makes. All right, so here's the original shock and here's the aftermarket shock I ordered. This is supposed to be 10% stiffer. Alright, let's see if this thing feels any stiffer. I don't know, it feels about the same. Right, let's see if it's sitting any higher. No, exactly the same. Alright, so I got these brackets here to lift this thing up a little bit. All right, well, normally I wouldn't be a fan of doing something like this, but um, crashing into the ground a few times the other day was pretty frustrating. So we'll see how this goes. I'm a little worried it's gonna crack right here because this mount, raising that up like that is putting a weird stress on it. Plus it's not great for these CV joints. I can always undo it, so let's see what happens. Thing that I noticed disappeared. See, there's supposed to be a guard here. It's still on this side, but this is just garbage plastic. So I got this metal one, that looks a little bit nicer. And look how messed up this got. That's crazy, that crash, like three times it happened. We were flying and just hit nothing. It sucked, it was such a violent stop. Let me trim some, let me trim these off and trim that off.
I just let it run for a little bit to warm it up. I've never changed the oil in this before, so let's do that while it's up on the lift. At least it's nice and easy to get to. So oil's right there, that's good. Alright, so another thing I wanna I got to attempt to make it quieter is this thing. All right, so it's got this nice thick cover right here, plus it covers all this area and goes under the seats, and it's got this storage bag here, which is pretty nice. So that should definitely make it quieter. All right, so the lift kit and new shocks are in. Let's see if it's any stiffer. And we have 10 inches off the ground, so it was nine before, so that's good, extra inch. All right, let's take it for a test drive. Alright, so with the lift kit and his new springs, the thing definitely sits a little higher and feels a little stiffer, so that's good. Let's try to get this thing stuck on purpose and test out the winch. Alright, that didn't work. Let's go try to find another spot to get stuck.
two, one. Perfect. to this was definitely an improvement the shocks are a little bit stiffer and it's got a little bit more ground clearance what I'd like to do now is maybe try some bigger tires on it so I actually have this four-wheeler here that I bought and it came with these big super swampers on it and they're a little too big for this four-wheeler see they kind of rub on the fenders so I figured I'll try them on the Rhino and I have this is the right size tire for that four-wheeler so I'll put those on here all right, let's see if we can get these installed on there. All right, these front rims might just fit on this thing. That would be nice. I don't think the backs are gonna though. Okay, so size difference. These are 26 912s. These are 26 12 12, so it's wider, but the, the, the height or so it's, should be the same. But for whatever reason, these Super Swampers, Super Swamper must have used a different tape measure than uh, Duro Power Gray, I don't know, whatever these are. So, I mean, they're bigger, even though they're the same size. Let's see, does it fit? like it all right so this this shock mount is rubbing pretty bad on that tire you know that may have fit if that lift kit wasn't on there all right look at look at this though if I use these rims it might work because if I measure here this rim from the edge of the rim it's about six inches And this one's like four, so these tires on these rims may work. Pretty different, I guess, metric. <laughs> metric inches. <laughs> okay. I 
Yeah, they're not cooperating very well with the tire machine so far. I guess if they're flat. They're almost the same size. Yeah. Almost. So what are you going to try them on the other rims? Yeah, I need to... Try one first to make sure it's actually probably a good idea before doing all of them. I've changed many tires on this machine. This is the one from Riley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much you buy this thing for? The tire machine? Yeah. Uh, five hundred maybe. That's not bad at all. Yeah. You see, there's ones on Amazon though that are like five hundred free shipping. That are like this style. With the strong arm? No, not with uh, that. I know the strong arm's quite a bit of money alone. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I used to use that so much for doing dirt bike tires and stuff with the rim lock. Cause you can put that where the lock is and hold the tire down. So problem with that coal bolt. This, this, no, this impact is awesome. I like that thing. That coal bolt, the battery, by the time one's dead, the other one's charged. Yeah. So you could just use it nonstop. Good? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got an inch. Oh yeah, sweet. It's damn close to stuff, but it's good. How's the other way? <laughs> it is close. That's it's close. Right? It's, it's not. You should probably make your own. That sounds just like a brake. That's shoe. just a brake rubbing something. I mean, it's close, but it's Yeah, weird. no, it's on there. As your suspension goes down, too, it's going to move it farther away from everything. Yeah, alright, that's sweet. Let's, uh,. Put the rest of them on.
Howard Preston to be in the state of New York, I think that would be fun for the flood. Everybody, Mr. and Mrs. Scott Smith. want to do to this is it throws mud all over itself that's very frustrating I think if I put some wider fenders on here that would fix that problem so let's get it cleaned up and then get some fenders on this thing
All right, a couple of these tires had slow leaks. Um, it was kind of for a few reasons. One, they were used tires. Some of them had some dry rot cracks that were actually leaking, and uh, the beads were kind of messed up on some of them too. But this stuff, tires with slow leaks, this stuff usually fixes it. And it's easy to do too, and it prevents future leaks too. So definitely recommend this product. Or probably products like it too. This isn't the only brand of this stuff. All right, so the last thing I want to do to this vehicle is the tires that are on here are sticking out a little bit wider than they did originally from the factory. And I mean, it's, it's throwing mud all over itself when you go on mud and that's pretty annoying. And I'm sure it still did that stock too because they, you know, the tires, it wasn't out that much, but it was still, it would still throw mud down the whole side of the machine and throw mud at the windshield and the operator and just make the thing very unpleasant to operate in muddy conditions. So I want to fix that. So you can see if I hold this piece of wood on the tire, you can see how much further the tire sticks out past the fender. So to correct that, now there's a few different options we have here. There were people selling, like one was like a fender that bolts on here, it was like a plastic unit and it gave it a little more width. And then there was another company also selling that, but it was like a whole body kit. And it did kind of change the looks of the vehicle, but it was expensive. It was like two or $300, more than I felt it should have been. And it was just kind of, it seemed like brittle plastic that I think I'd probably smash in two seconds. So I don't want to go that route. So what I ended up finding is, here, check this stuff out, is this stuff. It's a universal fender flare kit. And I'm probably going to add this to like everything because it's awesome. So pretty much it's got a flat surface. So look at the shape of this stuff. It's like a rubber. So it's strong. It's not going to get smashed. It's universal and it was pretty cheap. It's got like a flat mounting surface here. And essentially what you do is you just attach this right to the, the fender. And then for a cheap, easy option, you have that much more coverage to keep the vehicle from throwing mud at itself. And it looks really nice too. So, and it comes in different widths. So I'm going to put the link in the description for this stuff because really you could add this to everything and it'll keep your vehicle so much cleaner and keep salt off of it. And it's, this stuff is pretty awesome. I'm very happy I just found this. Clamp it on here to kind of show you. So it comes in different widths. I think this was two and a quarter. But you see, if I still hold this piece of wood up to it, the tire is still sticking out past it. So I'm sure that would help, but not enough. So then I got this wider width here too. So I think this was like four and a half. It's pretty wide. You know, that is pretty wide. I'll, I'll trim this at an angle here. But now with that, you hold this up to it. And look, we got a gap here. This, this is sticking out further than the tire. Having this on here should keep the vehicle much cleaner. So the way the hood opens, I kind of have to cut it here too. So let's see what I can do installing this stuff. All right, so for the mounting hardware, I'm just using quarter inch bolts. Now that makes it look a lot better. All right, so I was a little, cause this hood opens. So, and obviously this doesn't open with the hood. So these need to be separated here. So, you know, I'm not thrilled about making that seam, but that's just kind of what I need to do. Um, I mean, that's going to look a drop weird, but. Okay, so for attaching to the steel tubing, I'm going to use these self-drilling screws.
Okay, this is that spot where I got stuck and had to winch out. So uh, I'm gonna make it this time. Alright, cool. I didn't get stuck that time. Well, sort of, but I didn't have to winch. That was the goal. That is uh, not an easy mud pit right there. So the other thing, I just put these fenders on here. That's nice. The vehicle is actually clean after spinning its tires in the mud. You know, the windshield's perfectly clean and the whole thing. So that's going to make this thing much more comfortable to operate because it won't be throwing mud all over itself and all over the glass and all over the operator. So I'm definitely happy with these uh, fender flares. I all right, so I'm gonna kinda end this video now. I've had this thing a few months and kinda went over all, you know, brought it out riding a bunch of times, talked, to those, talked about those experiences and filmed all the upgrades and stuff I've done to it. And the repairs so as a review this thing is definitely cool it combines the right amount of being a work vehicle with it being a play vehicle you know you could take it out riding on four-wheeler trails have a lot of fun with it plus it's a very handy thing to have around the yard with its little dump body it's easy to get in and out of it's low range it's trailer hitch so it's definitely cool um, it's also fun that a bunch of my friends all also bought side-by-sides at the same time. And it's also kind of interesting that everyone bought something different. So going with all those different machines, you kind of get to experience all of them. Um, so this is a Yamaha Rhino. It's an 06. They don't make this model anymore. I think now it's called a Viking or a Wolverine or something. I definitely... The only complaint I had with this thing was how loud it was. The few things I did to it to make it quieter saved it, so it, it's good now. Um, you know, my friend with the black Kawasaki T-Rex, that thing's pretty nice. I like that. My friend who bought that Kimco, which is almost identical to this Rhino. It's like there's parts that are just interchangeable. I think Rhino or Yamaha sold out the rights to copy this vehicle or to other brands or something like that. That's how similar they are. So that Kimco's definitely been good. Um, some of my friends who bought the Pure Sport machines, I'm definitely a lot less impressed with those. They don't have, they're not really useful for work. Um, you know, the razors don't have the, the Polaris razors don't have a dumping body. They don't really like going slow as much. Um, it's much more of a toy vehicle. So for me, that would make it a much harder thing to justify buying. Uh, my other friend bought a YXZ 1000, and it's another. It's a Yamaha, and it's a very fast machine. And he spent like 20 grand on the thing. But with its standard transmission, I'm just. It's not that impressive. Yeah, it's faster, but like when you're on these tight trails, like we're riding, you know, here anyway. It, he's not going any faster than us. And plus, with his standard transmission, that thing's harder to operate. Plus, his clutch broke on it, and the thing's only like two years old or one year old. So. So I'm not super impressed with that one. Another one of my friends, he bought a uh, Cub Cadet. And it's a vehicle that looks like this. But the, it's more of a work vehicle than a play vehicle. And it's good for working around his around a yard. But it has a solid rear axle instead of independent suspension. And it's just so much slower than this thing. It just doesn't handle right. Um, another one of my friends bought a Honda Pioneer 500. And it's another similar vehicle to this. But it's just... It's just too slow. The 500cc engine is too small. Um, you know, when we go out riding for real, it can't hang with these things. This thing, the Kimco, the T-Rex, they can go as fast as you want to go. And really, the pure sport models 
can't, I mean, they sort of can outrun them. If you're on like blacktop or something, they'll get away from you, no problem. But if you're in the tight trails, this thing will go as fast as any of them. So I'm definitely happy with this vehicle. Definitely something I'm going to keep around for a very long time. All right, so another thing that's really great about this machine is you can bring dogs with you. That is much harder to do on an ATV or something. Dogs don't like riding on ATVs, but the dogs love riding in this thing. They can either ride in the front seat or the floor of the front seat or in this bed. And this thing rides smooth enough. I've brought them on like legitimate trail rides where we're, we're moving, we're going fast, we're riding for fun. And the dogs do fine in the back and are pretty comfortable and happy riding in it. So one other thing I wanted to mention, I, a few videos back I did a video talking about the perfect pickup truck and talked about how a truck could be built that would last forever. It wouldn't get smashed up, it wouldn't rust out. Not like the, you know, the tin foil trucks that are driven now. And this thing, this, you know, it's a pickup truck. It's just a very small pickup truck. And it's not road legal, so that's kind of makes it not a pickup truck right there. But it has a lot of the design elements that I think could transfer to much bigger vehicles, which would tremendously increase their, their longevity. So let's go over this quick. Things about this vehicle that could transfer to like three quarter ton pickup trucks. The way this is built. So, you know, this thing, th this isn't sheet metal like in a pickup truck. It's plastic and it's it's the type of plastic, it's never going to rust out. It's not brittle. It's So if when it takes a hit, it just kind of bends back into shape. I think pickup trucks could use plastic fenders like that. or So, you know, so the plastic body panels are real nice. The whole bottom of this thing is completely flat. Nothing hangs down whatsoever. It's got independent suspension. Front and rear, which I think pickup trucks would really benefit from because it gives it does give this thing a much smoother ride. Um, another thing that's nice about this that's a problem with pickup trucks, the air intake is mounted up in between the seats so you can go through pretty deep water with this thing without the motor stalling for no reason you know a lot of trucks and cars on the road they put the air intakes in such a stupid spot if the vehicle gets a little bit wet the motor stops running and in some cases the motor will even destroy itself this thing I've seen videos online of people submerging these things in water and they just continue to operate so that's something that could really help a lot of pickup trucks if they advertise the water fording abilities of it you know they don't even talk about stuff like that when advertising for pickup trucks all right, so the biggest design element of this thing, which could really help normal cars and trucks, instead of the whole vehicle being built out of pressed sheet metal and that making up the vehicle structure, this thing is a tube chassis vehicle. And I know there's plenty of tube chassis vehicles out there. A lot of them are handmade specialty vehicles that aren't practical. They're only good for some racing event or something and really aren't something that a normal person would want. This is a mass-produced practical tube chassis vehicle and what's really cool about that it makes it a much lighter stronger vehicle than anything you know imagine if this thing was made out of sheet metal like a regular truck it'd be a lot heavier and it'd be it'd be all dented up and it'd, it'd rust out and a few videos ago i did a video talking about how to build the perfect pickup truck and i even built a scale model of 120th scale of the frame so this is it here that's if this was 20 times bigger this should be the perfect chassis for a pickup truck the way it's built it's similar to this vehicle here it's the the tubing steel makes up the structure of the vehicle it won't fail in a rollover it's a much stronger vehicle and probably much lighter because then you're not making the whole thing out of crazy pressed pieces of sheet metal that are all glued and, and spot welded together it's just a exo it's like a skeleton and then the fill panels could be filled in with um you know like on this they use plastic which is great it doesn't rust doesn't get smashed doesn't dent um you know aluminum would be wouldn't be bad sheet aluminum because it doesn't rust out and you know if it's eighth inch thick it's still light but much stronger than you know really thin sheet metal so it'd be cool if they um, 
started making road legal versions of stuff like this. Now, they keep making them bigger and bigger, which I'm not really a fan of. This thing is like the perfect size. It's much closer in size to an ATV than like a truck. Now, a lot of the side-by-sides on the market now are much bigger, and they're closer to the size of like a Jeep than they are an ATV, and that's kind of... I mean, it's kind of neat for some stuff, but if you want to take it on ATV trails, this is the right size. So I think if you go on Google and type in Yamaha Rhino measurements or specifications, you know, all the height, width, all that stuff is on on there. But they, they got it perfect with this thing. This is how big side-by-side -side ATVs should be. So, all right, I guess that kind of ends this video. You'll probably be seeing more of this thing in future videos, but this is the video about this vehicle.